today we're talking about Akiba Framework on Framework, uh, or FOF, the abbreviation for it, and it's a rapid application development uh, for Joomla. So, first of all, what is RAD? And basically, it's an easy way to, to make a, an app or a component or a module um, very quickly uh, with as little code as possible. Uh, at the moment, when you're making an extension in Joomla, there's lots and lots of files you have to edit and um, create, and there's lots of um, lots of code all over the place, uh, a lot of copying and pasting, and the whole idea of a rapid application um, development is that it just minimises the amount of work that you need to do to just the bare minimum, um, not lots of copying and pasting, just um, cuts down a lot of the complexity, does a lot of things automatically for you, and just simplifies the whole process. So. Framework on Framework, um, it's a rapid application development uh, for Joomla that's developed by Nicholas Dianosopoulos. It's software that he wrote for himself for his own extensions for a Keeper Backup, a Keeper Subscriptions, a Keeper Ticket System, all his products. And uh, it basically made it easier for him to maintain all his own products. And he got it to a point where he thought it was pretty good and released it as a, a public version that other people would then use and start building their own extensions out of. So unlike um, some other frameworks, it's not standalone. It definitely requires Joomla. You can't use framework and framework as a standalone PHP framework. It's um, completely reliant on the, the Joomla CMS code. And unlike the, the Joomla CMS, there's a, a very um, strong backwards compatibility mentality. So. Uh, you can install the Akiba Framework and Framework on a Joomla 2.5 site or a Joomla 3, write the same code that should work on both, um, but you can also write code that um, is different on uh, Joomla 3 and Joomla 2.5. You can have two different files and it loads up one view when it's on Joomla 3, one view when it's on Joomla 2.5. But yeah, the, the Joomla um, CMS has a, a pretty bad history of um, changing things and um, breaking backwards compatibility and annoying developers and so that's one of the things that Framework and Framework tries to make it easier on developers and um, when Joomla 3.5 comes out hopefully um, the code that you wrote on Joomla 3.2 will still continue to work and you won't have to make any changes. So it's now in Joomla 3.2 which is still in the beta at the moment. Um, due for release sometime in November. Uh, I think Andrew said about the 6th of November was uh, the aim at the moment, but um, yeah, sometime around then. Now, it almost got into Joomla 3.1 back in um, March, but um, didn't quite get in there. And uh, it's probably a good thing because there's been some improvements to framework and framework since then. Um, XML only views have been added and, and some other cool stuff so um, it's really good that it's in there now. It was sort of a chicken and egg situation before that no one wanted to add it into the um, into the CMS because uh, not many people were using it and not many people were using it because it wasn't in the core. So now that the decisions have been made that it's going in there, uh, we should see a lot more people using it. So when you look at framework on framework, um, it uses the, the dry methodology, don't repeat yourself, um, as opposed to the, the wet, um, write everything twice, um, <laughs> not wet as in water. Um, yeah, it now uses Bootstrap and jQuery, and um, it has some web services capabilities. It's got built-in JSON support. Uh, it's almost RESTful, but not completely. Um, I'm not really gonna cover that side of things, if you're interested, you can go in and, and have a look at the documentation. And it's HMVC, hierarchical, hierarchical uh, MVC, which basically means that you can write a view and then you can reuse that view in another view um, or you can embed it in a module or um, it just makes it a lot more standalone that um, you don't have to rewrite the same thing twice if you want two similar views and stuff. Yeah, so Nicholas is the, the guy that created it, and so we all know him from Akiva Backup and, and all his other products. Um, but now that it's been released as a, a public, um, yeah, it's on GitHub, we've got over 23 contributors to Framework and Framework, and 
um, that's only going to grow over time. It's a separate repository to the CMS. It's actually, uh, when you look in Joomla, in the libraries folder, you'll see the FOF folder within there. And um, that's where all the source code is. And it's kind of treated as a, a third party library for Joomla. It's um, not maintained with the official CMS co uh, code. Okay, just a few key dates for Framework and Framework. Um, first release to the public in May 2012. Uh, in June, Bootstrap and jQuery was added. And then March this year, the XML um, view templates were added, which allows you to make a view without creating any PHP code at all. It's just all XML. And uh, now it's been added to, to Joomla 3.2. So some of the benefits of using Framework on Framework, there's significantly less code than traditional Joomla extension development, and less code relates to less bugs, because if you're writing 10,000 lines of code, you're gonna have a lot, hell of a lot more bugs than if you're only writing 5,000 lines of code. Um, so, yeah, it, also because you're writing a lot less, it, it takes a lot less time to develop, so um, you're gonna save a lot of time making things. You can quite easily um, just chuck something together, see how it's going to look, and um, then you go in and, and add all the, the functionality later. Um, there's a lot of auto magic stuff that basically, if you stick to the conventions and the naming standards, then you get a lot of things automatically for free in Framework and Framework. Um, for instance, if you want to export a view as CSV, um, you can just at the end of the view name put and format equals CSV and automatically exports that view to CSV. Uh, same with JSON export. Um, some other things like when you're adding um, an enabled field which is the same as what we know as a state field or a published field in Joomla at the moment, uh, you can just add that field to the database and add the field to the, the form and it'll automatically add in the, the filter in the view and um, it'll do the functionality where um, the publish and unpublish tick when you press on it to, to turn it on and off. And it, it just does all this stuff um, that you'd normally have to, to do manually. It just happens automatically now. So as I mentioned, it's used in all the Akiba products at the moment. And um, the first component in Joomla 3.2 that's actually using it is the post installation messages component which is one that uh, Nicholas has contributed to the core. Um, it's also used by a couple of other people um, and there's been a few developers that have said that now that it's in the core they're going to start rewriting their extensions to use it. Um, if you search on GitHub you'll find a couple of um, different products on there that people have written with, with Framework or Framework but at this stage there isn't a lot out there. As far as system requirements go, uh, it requires Joomla 2.5 or greater. The initial version of Framework on Framework ran on Joomla 1.5 and you're able to run extensions, the same code on Joomla 1.5 as well as 2.5, um, but 1.5 support has been dropped now, so it's just 2.5 onwards um, and obviously supports Joomla 3. Um, because Framework and Framework isn't included with Joomla 2.5, you have to include that in your package when you install your extension and check to make sure that it's using the right version of that. Um, but in Joomla 3.2, because it's in the core, um, you don't need to include it. If you're just writing extensions for 3.2 or greater, uh, you can just write your code and install it in there. Um, it requires Joomla, uh, sorry, requires PHP 5.3.1. Um, which is going to be a problem on some older sites um, or people with crappy hosting. Um, but you would have seen the messages in the Kiva Backup and, and Nicholas's other products about PHP warnings if you're still running an older version of PHP. So hopefully um, over time that will get phased out and, and everyone will use a, a decent web host that, that supports decent PHP versions. Okay, it uses convention over configuration, which basically means that if you use the naming standards within Framework and Framework, then you get all this functionality for free. Um, if you don't use the naming standards, then you're going to have to do it all by hand, the, the old um, Joomla way. So it, it's important to, to use the, um, the naming standards for views, for um, 
for the primary key of the uh, tables um, and using the, the magic fields like enabled and um, hits and uh, some other ones as well that I'll go into shortly. So some key features of Framework and Framework is the ability to reuse views. Uh, there's a command to load any template that you can basically call anywhere you like and it will load up that view that you've already written elsewhere. So if you were writing a view on the back end and you wanted to include that view on the front end, you can just call that load any template and load up exactly the same view onto the front end. Um, Media file overrides um, is a really good one. At the moment, in a Joomla component, when you have a, a CSS file or an image, and um, you, you install an extension, and maybe you go in and change that image or change some of the CSS code, when you go to upgrade that extension, install the next version, it'll overwrite those changes and put back the original CSS file or, or image file. Um, but what Framework and Framework does, it's kind of like template overrides. It allows you to override the, any of the media files, so CSS, uh, JavaScript, as well as images. And in your template folder, um, normally you've got the HTML folder that you put your template overrides in. Um, what you do is you create a media folder within your template, and then you can put the overrides in there. So the media, and then the component name, and then um, the the files that you're overriding and that's generally overriding the, the files that are stored in the media folder within Joomla itself so normally you've got media slash component name slash images whatever or slash um, CSS um, yeah so you can um, override any of those quite easily which is a really powerful feature um, I mentioned briefly before about being able to export a view to CSV uh, just by including uh, m format equals CSV in any view name, and you can also do that with JSON. It, um, just supported by any views, just automatically. You don't need to do anything to turn that on. Uh, when it comes to views, you can now do a view that's completely XML only, but you can still do a uh, PHP-based view if you want to, um, or you can use a combination of both. So you can have um, the XML. Uh, view with a PHP file that loads that XML view and then maybe displays uh, information above it or below it um, or you might just completely do PHP view uh, but in framework and framework um, you don't have to create the model, the view and the controller you basically just create the view and it does the rest for you unless you're trying to do anything fancy whereas in normal Joomla component development you have to create the controller, the model and the view and so there's a lot more code normally you'd write um, you can mix and match, you can still use the old way of doing things if you want to, you can create your own um, component model and view and still load up the, the way you're currently doing it and then you can have some other views in your component that are just purely um, generating the view and, and it does the rest for you. So we've got a bunch of magic fields in, in framework and framework. Um, enabled uh, is basically the same as state or published. Um, basically, a lot of these fields uh, are similar to the way they work in the, the normal Joomla components, but Nicholas has used more of a um, sort of a, a more common speak for um, these fields, like for instance, created on instead of created, or uh, locked by instead of checked out. Uh, it's just a he feels it's a little bit more user friendly for for people when they're seeing these fields, um, the names sort of describe a bit better what they actually do. So uh, any of these fields, you can just add them to your database and um, then add to the view and the functionality behind them will be implemented automatically. Uh, for instance, the hits, um, you can just add that uh, field to your table and add a column to your view for hits and it'll automatically count the number of hits uh, that uh, documents had. You don't need to write any code for that to happen. Um, same with the uh, uh, created by. Uh, normally when you save a document it'll store um, the user ID of the person that created that document um, and also the uh, 
what is it, the created on, which is the, the date that it was created, uh, you can just add those fields to your database and then uh, Joomla will automatically record that information without you having to, to program it at all. It just, just happens magically. So the reasons why you'd use framework and framework is because it's significantly less code. Um, I'm going to show you an example here comparing uh, com hello world to another component and based on the example that, that I'm showing you that's less than half the files you can probably cut it down even further but um, yeah I didn't try to optimize it too much it's just a demonstration uh, and it's significantly less code and uh, because of all that automatic functionality uh, you get so much more for free and so with less code you get more functionality and because you're writing less code and it's easier to create it's a much lower barrier of entry so I think we're going to see a lot more people getting into developing components because it's going to be much simpler for them to, to get in there and get started they won't have to um, learn absolutely everything uh, if they know a bit of XML then pretty much they can make a component now So just looking at the Hello World example that's on the um, docs.joomla.org, you can go in there and, and download it. I've taken part nine, which is where they get to the point where they've just got a very, very basic back end where you can create uh, a form um, and type in a, a greeting message and save it. And it doesn't really do too much there, but it's just really basic functionality. Now. We're going to compare that to a framework and framework version of a, a similar thing. So now it's time for a bad joke. Um, when I was coming up with a name for the component that I'm going to compare here, I didn't want to use com hello world because then comparing hello world to hello world is a bit confusing. So I thought I'd, um, thinking of a, a bad joke at the time, um, apologise in advance to any Indians that may be watching this video or in the audience, but I um, don't know if you've heard the joke that uh, a, an Indian's going for uh, a job interview and he's applying to work at a call centre and as part of that job interview he has to do an English test and one of the questions on the English test is use the words green, pink and yellow in a sentence. So his sentence is the phone goes green green so I pink it up, yellow, welcome to Telstra. Yeah. So anyway, that's my bad joke and so this component that we're doing here is called Com Yellow. So it's just a really simple framework and framework component that's just trying to replicate what that com hello world component does. And you can see here that auto straight away it um, looks like it, it does more. Um, it's this created by column here. It's automatically picked up uh, an image of me in there, of the person who created it. Uh, you've got all these search filters and um, sortable stuff that Normally you'd have to hand code each of those, but that just happens automatically there. We've got a whole lot of toolbar buttons up here, the um, the, the menu down the side here, um, all of this. Um, and when we compare the two, just looking at the number of lines of code, you can see that the difference is in here. In the, the normal component, um, a lot of the files are PHP, and so we've got 285 lines of PHP code. Now you compare that to, to this example I've done here and there's only 15 lines of PHP code and that's probably a bit too much because I even put in a file for the front end we're not using yet so could probably get it down even less if we really wanted to, to make it um, even more efficient. Um, but you'll notice here that the framework and framework version uses significantly more XML files. Um, there's 130 lines of code instead of 89 so it's sort of taking the, the focus away from PHP moving it towards XML more. Um, SQL, there's not a lot of difference, I've had a few extra bits in, in this one and HTML, yeah, not too much in it, but comparing the two you can see that it's, it's less than half the files and less than half the lines of code and we're getting more functionality straight away. So we're going to have a bit of a look at, at how this com yellow component was built. Just a couple of tips, if you're playing around with framework and framework don't use Joomla 3.2 beta 1 because it doesn't work. <laughs> um, this issue's been reported on the, the issue tracker and uh, I saw, I think it was on uh, Friday, they've actually merged a fix for this. So hopefully the next 
beta version, um, beta 2, it'll be okay. But at the moment, beta 1 is bad, so don't use it if you're planning on doing framework and framework development. Um, the, the Joomla 3.2 Alpha 1 uh, is good. It's, it's a way to go at the moment. But yeah, give it a couple of weeks and you'll be able to use the latest beta and it won't be a problem. The next tip is that Framework on Framework uh, likes to cache the, the tables. So whenever you make a change to the tables, uh, you should go in and clear your cache. Otherwise, you're going to get all these sorts of strange error messages that um, yeah, just cause the component not to work properly. Is that just when you've got cache enabled, or is that by default now? Uh, it, it happens by default, I think. Um, th this is just a, a, a standard Joomla install with nothing changed and install the component and you've got to go in and clear the cache, so um, yeah, it's just a tip. So if you're wondering why something isn't quite working, clear your cache and chances are it might fix up the problem. So let's have a look at some of the code. So we'll start out with the, the database table. Um, you'll notice that this is pretty similar to uh, a normal component. Um, but there's a few differences here, and this is where the, the naming standards are very important. So if we look at the top here, you can see that the component name is part of the table, um, and you can see there that the view name is at the end of the table name, so you always use the plural version of your view, so if you've got an item view and an items, you'd use the items. Um, it's the same if you had like car, cars, book, books. Um, it, it's, it's always a plural version for your table and you can see that it's using the singular version of the view for the, the ID record of that view so that, that's very important too um, if you get that wrong then framework and framework is not going to work too well for you you can see that down there the primary key is just the same as that first field that, that we had at the top there which is the component name and then the singular version of the view and then ID and you can also see that we've added a few magic fields in here. Um, that created by a column that we saw, uh, that was one of the ones that we've added in there. Um, just added a few other, other standard ones in there too. Now, when we create the component, um, the first file that's executed in the component is this entry point. The, it's just the in the components folder it's the name of the component, so in this case yellow.php. Uh, you can see at the top there just a standard code to stop um, this file being executed directly. And then we're loading up the framework and framework libraries and raising an error if the, the libraries aren't present. Now, if you're doing this for 3.2 or greater, you may not even need to check that the libraries are there because you know they're going to be there, but um, if you're doing this component for any older versions, then you'll, you definitely want to check to make sure that it's available. And then we have the dispatcher that uh, basically just got the, the component name in there, the com underscore yellow, and then that triggers the dispatch. So the dispatcher, we've got two options to this. One is to create a dispatcher.php file in the component that um, tells it where to go, or you can do it in an XML file. Uh, now, in the component directory, there's a fof.xml file that basically tells Joomla that this component uses framework on framework. Um, and you can just have that as a blank file, blank XML file, uh, but you can also use it as your dispatcher where you're defining what the default view for the component is. So in this case, items is the default view. When you first click on the component in the components menu, it's going to go straight to that items view. Um, you could have also done this via a dispatcher PHP file, depends on, on what you're doing there. But this is just a simple example, chucking the XML is an easy option. Okay, we have the, the installation file, which um, it's pretty much the same as any standard Joomla component that says where all the files are, um, where the, the SQL files are to install it, which files are for the uninstall, which are for the back end, front end, media, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's nothing particularly fancy in that. It's, it's just, just what you're used to. Then we have the config file, which is 
pretty much the same as you'd see in a normal Joomla component and this is where you can just say the component name in there and this will define the uh, permissions uh, in the when you go into the component options um, then you'll see all the permissions for available for that component and so that also ties in with the access XML file which is basically the same as a normal Joomla component you just say in the component name in there and then all the permissions that this component has available so just the standard things like admin, manage, create, delete, edit, edit state. Okay, then we have the list view. Um, this is a plural version of the view, so items, this is the default view. Um, there was too much code to just cram onto this one slide, so I've just sort of cut it down to basically each column in that view has a header and it has the, the column details, the field. Um, and there's a little bit of code above it, but not much. And essentially, if you want to add another column to the view, you've just got to add that header and the field, and then that's added that extra column into the view. Okay, then we have the, the, the form itself, which is the item view, the singular version. And so when you click on the, the record in that list view, then it opens up the, the item and you can go in there and fill out the form and, and enter the details. So in this case, we've just got a single text field for the title, and that's where we'd put our Hello World greeting in there. Um, but normally you'd have a lot more fields than this on the form. Um, but if you want to add in another field, you can just go in and edit this file, like you would normally do in your models forms, um, and then the, whatever the view name.xml in the normal Joomla component, you're actually doing it within the view. So just as an example, if you wanted to add in the enabled field, which is a published, unpublished or state field, um, first of all you need to add the field to your database. So it's just a simple alter query to, to add that extra field to the database. Then you can go into your form and just like that previous slide, I'll just go back here, you could just add underneath where it's got the, the field title, you can add in this enabled field, it's just some code here. That, um, Okay, sorry, no, this is for the, the view, the list view. The next slide shows that, that form. So the, the list view, you're just adding in the header and then the field. And then on the form, uh, you add in just the field onto the form. And I'll just go back to that slide. So you can see here, it's now got this enabled with the, the tick, where you can press on it to publish or unpublish it. And you'll also notice that this filter over the side here, enabled filter, has automatically appeared. Now, normally when you're developing a component for Joomla 3, you would have to create the code that causes that filter to display. And in your model, you'd have to set the state of that filter and check it in your query when you're um, showing what records are going to show in that view. But this just happens automatically. We don't need to worry about any of that code at all. It just, just happens for us. Yeah, so that's the just adding the field onto the form. And when you click on the, the form, the, the, the record to open it up, you can see now there's a, the status field that's been added on there, um, which stores in the enabled field in the database. Okay, so here's just an example of adding a, another field to the form, um, just adding a country field. You can just go into that XML file within the view and just add in another field and make sure you've got that field in your database as well and then it'll just start working. So you can see there there's now a country field there. Um, we also need to add in the language file, uh, the language string for, for that field because otherwise <coughs> it's just going to have that long language string in there which looks awful. So, now for some cool stuff. As I mentioned before, the CSV, any view at all, you can just put and format equals CSV, and it'll automatically export all the data displayed in that view to a CSV file. And you can see here, there's an example of exporting one of the views. It's picked up all those fields, the ID, title, ordering, created on, created by, all that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, to display less. Or, um, Presumably, yeah. 
don't know, haven't played with it that much. And similarly, the, the JSON format, you can just add an ampersand format equals JSON, and that'll export the view as a, a JSON field there, which then you can use for whatever web services stuff you're doing. So you can mix and match the XML and the PHP files in your view. Uh, if you wanted to create the form in XML, but then load up some other code um, below or above that form, you can create a PHP file in that same view, so in this case default.php, and that'll get executed first, and then within that it calls the XML file which loads the view. So you've got this uh, get rendered form, and then echo view template, and just these two lines of code here are what causes that XML um, view to, to load up. Then we can have our own custom code underneath it. So for instance, if you wanted to put a, a link to the JED or something like that in your component, you can easily do that. So there's just a screenshot showing that, that extra text that's loading up from that PHP file. Now just an example of the media overrides. Um, in the top of your uh, list view, there's a section in here where you're loading up the CSS files. Now you'll notice that it also loads up less files in, um, in a CSS version. Um, and basically this uh, media colon slash slash component slash CSS slash back end at less, that would load up the file that's in the media folder and then slash com yellow slash CSS slash back end LSS. Um, and we can override that file just by creating within our template. Um, yeah, so th th there's a the file that's loading up the, the CSS file. And in our template, so if we're using ISIS, the default template, we can create this media folder within your template. Then it's the component name and then CSS, backend CSS. And we can change the, the code in that file there and then that's going to load up instead of the one that's in the component. So for instance here, just turning that text to, from grey to hot pink. Yeah, and it's important that it's that media folder, not the HTML folder within your template. Okay, um, you'll notice in the component that uh, I showed you, on the left hand side there's the the menu that you'd normally have that shows all the different views that you've got in that component in Joomla 3. Um, that stuff happens automatically and by default it picks up those views in your component based um, on alphabetical. So if you've got um, aardvarks and uh, zoo then aardvarks is obviously going to be first and then zoo last. Um, but you can go in and customise the order of those uh, items in that menu. So to do that you just need to create a metadata.xml file, but it's an all or nothing approach. So you either have it all automatically um, sorted alphabetically, or every single view you go in and, and put that metadata file to specify the order that that's going to appear in. So in this case, it's just this ordering field here, four, so this would be menu item number four in that list. Some views you don't want in your menu, you want to hide them. So you can do that just by creating a skip.xml file within that view, and then that view won't get built in that menu on the side automatically. Okay, another really cool thing about Framework and Framework is the fact that you can have different versions of the same view that load up depending on the Joomla version. So you, you might have a slightly different view for your Joomla 2.5 version compared to your Joomla 3 version. Um, and you can do that by, uh, within the, the view folder, there's different versions of default file that you can create. So it loads them up in this order. So if you had a, a default.j25 PHP file, it would check to see whether you're running Joomla 2.5, and if you are, it's going to load this file and ignore all the other um, default files in that view. Uh, so, but, um, if you're running Joomla 3, it's going to ignore that, and it's going to the next file. Um, J2, is it running Joomla 2, any version? No, so then it would fall back to that default file. Um, 
if you wanted to uh, load up a specific view for, for say Joomla 3.2 you can do default.j32.php and that would load up which could be a different view to what you load up in Joomla 3.1 or Joomla 3.0 um, and yeah so it just does it in, in that order there um, checks the, the major version and then uh, defaults back to the others um, you can also do that with the XML only views so you can just put in the form.default.version.xml and it'll go through those in the same way that it'll uh, check the, the version and keep on falling back until it finds one that matches or, or um, catches all with the, the default. So let's have a bit of a demo of some of the stuff that we've been playing with here. Um, so I've got a Joomla 3.1, uh, 3.2 Alpha 1 site that's just a vanilla install and as you can see it's just got the standard components in the list there what I'm going to do is install that basic com yellow extension And so here's the component here, so we can go in and create a, a new greeting message. And save it, and so that's all doing that nicely. If we look at the source code, I was going to show you the, the view file before. Um, I'll just go through all the files in this component quickly. So this is the installation file that's just a com component name.xml and it looks pretty much just like any standard Joomla component that you've got. Um, nothing fancy in there. The way that Nicholas does his framework and framework extensions, instead of having a site folder and an admin folder, he calls it backend and frontend, but you could call that whatever you like. It's just basically whatever you define in this XML file here. Um, yeah, you can say folder equals front end. You could say folder equals site there if you wanted to. Um, or the where's the back end one? Um, yeah, folder equals back end. You could call that admin if you wanted to. Um, I've also got the language folder. So just looking in the back end, first of all, we've got that file that loads up the, the framework and framework and just dispatches the component. We've got the FOF file which has our dispatcher in it which defines the default view which is items. Um, when you're creating views on the front end and stuff you can also define the permissions in there whether people can just browse a view or whether they can edit or um, yeah, uh, view a view and stuff. Uh, through this XML file you can control all that too. Yeah, so we've got the config which we saw before which is nothing fancy and the access. Now you'll notice a distinct lack of models and controllers and all these other folders you normally find in a component. They all just happen automatically. So you can include them if you're trying to do anything fancy but just for a really simple component you don't need them anymore which is awesome. Um, the SQL folder, it's got our MySQL in here that installs the table in our database and we've got the uninstall file as well and then we've got our views so you can see there there's the list view and the item view so just have a look in the list view normally in here you'd find a view.html.php file don't need it um, you just need in the tmpl folder that's where you've got your default file so here's the view and you can see it, it's pretty simple it's just loading up the form um, it's saying whether you're going to show filters or not whether you're going to show the headers um, whether you want to include pagination or not. Pagination used to be an absolute pain to, to put in, but um, yeah, this just does it all automatically. You don't need to, to worry about any of that. Um, there's a placeholder. When um, your view does a query and it doesn't return any records, you can define up here what language string it's, what text it's going to show, no records available, or whatever you want it to say. Um, it just 
falls back to, to that text string there. Um, then we have the headers at the top here, and these are the different columns in our view. So you can see here how I've got the ID column, the title column, the created by, and the ordering column. Now, some fancy things in here, you can define whether you want these columns to be sortable. You just say sortable equals true, or if you don't want it to be sortable, sortable equals false. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, you can define the width and all that sort of normal stuff. Uh, then we have the, the the field itself in the um, in the where it's got the items. So we've got the ID, the title, and created by ordering. You'll notice in the title here how we'll, um, when you click on it, it's going to load up the component and it's passing the ID by this <coughs> item column ID, so it knows which record you've clicked on, and it'll um, load that up. And you can also define in here what text you want to display when uh, that title field is blank. Uh, you'll probably put a language string in there instead of just having no title in brackets. Um, but yeah, this was just a quick example. Okay, so then if we have a look at the item form, once again there's no view.html.php you normally expect. You don't need to bother with that. You can just go in here and create the form and there's the field that we've got on our form, the, the title field so uh, I'll just get rid of this if we go back to our component and click on here you can see we've only got the one field there at the moment let's just add another one So now if we just add that to the, the view as well, the list view. So there we go, it's got the enabled filter here that's happened automatically and it's got it enabled over there. Um, you can still do a lot of stuff the, the old Joomla way, you can add up, you can have your own custom fields and yeah, like that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. So, yeah, that's the, the real basic introduction to framework and framework. So, hopefully, that gives you enough to, to go in and start having a crack and see what you can do. Um, yeah, we've got some, hopefully, a few minutes for questions. If you have you, got you try sending the functionality uh, in a simple component like this, but could you need some mm -hmm. validation for saving or something like that? And you still use. Um, you can, but what you probably then need to do is um, create your own um, yeah, model that uh, loads up certain things. Um, like y you can still create the, the models and the controllers, uh, even if you are using these XML views or, or just the um, PHP views. Uh, it, it's only not required if you're doing something really simple like this, but if you're trying to do something a bit fancier, you can still create all that and extend the, the functionality the same way you'd normally do it in a in the Joomla component now.
Thanks, Any other questions? No? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I can do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you, you can also find uh, on GitHub. There's a couple of examples that Nicholas has done. Um, <coughs> There's a contact us one that he's done. It's just a, a simple component that's got a, a real basic front end on it um, with a item view and a thank you message. And the back end's just got a couple of items and it allows you to create a category as well. Um, there's also one for a to-do, which is just another simple extension. It's got just an items view on the back end and on the front end, the items where you can add to do items on the front end. Um, yeah, the, the couple of other GitHub examples that I found was this one MD car or MD agreement. Um, the ones that if you just search on GitHub, you, you'll find and be able to download and, and look at the source code. Those examples, right? Yeah, well, they're, they're ones that are uh, the to do and the contact us are ones that Nicholas has written. Uh, this MD car and MD agreement is by a, another developer. Um, this last slide, um, if you go to this Google group, at the top of that Google group, there's a whole lot of links to examples and um, the uh, presentation that Nicholas uh, has done uh, on developing using framework and framework, and there's links to the, the GitHub examples and um, documentation wiki. Yeah. Thanks for coming.